Welcome to TAP, and today we have a very special guest. Welcome, Jill Bolte Taylor. I am so happy to be here with you. I've been looking forward to this for months. <laughs> yes, it has been scheduled for months. It's been months, <laughs> actually. yeah. Actually, uh, and um, so you are a PhD, and I'm holding in my hands the book that we primarily are going to speak about. It is actually going to be about this book because you are in this book catching us up on what has gone before. So that's really cool because I found you only through this book. But a lot of other people know you through a very famous TED Talk um, back in 2008, right? Yes. Like yes. forever ago. And But here you are with the book. It's from 21 and it's called Whole Brain Living, The Anatomy of Choice and the Four Characters That Drive our life and I am I you know I was I think I wrote you that I'm disturbingly impressed with this <laughs> these four characters <laughs> because this is something we speak a lot about in this podcast is personality and you know the depth of our, our psychology and here comes like a brain scientist talking about that it's all in the brain it can you see it's a, it, it was just yeah whoa <laughs> so I'm excited to I hear about that. about that Yeah. But first, maybe do you want to just introduce people to this major life shift that you had in '96, yeah. and because sure. we are gonna talk about your birth chart and then your rebirth chart. Because Perfect. This is, yeah, I so, love it. I'm very excited about it. Yeah, but set the scene, if you will. Thank you. Yes. So um, I grew up to study the brain because one of my older brothers has been diagnosed with the brain disorder schizophrenia. And he's only 18 months older than I. So everywhere we went, we went together as children do. And I noticed at a very young age, I'm talking four or five, six years old, that we were very different in how we interpreted our experiences. And it just didn't make any sense to me how he could think one thing and I would think another thing. And so I became fascinated with uh, facial language and body language and what am I as a biological creature and what is normal anyway? Because one of us was clearly you know, not normal in that we were very different. So, um, but as children, of course, we don't really know diagnoses. Of course, we know nothing about psychology or psychiatry. We just know mm -hmm. different. So um, I became a neuroanatomist. Uh, so I specialize in the cells of the brain, how they communicate with one another and how the brain organizes information. And on, uh, I was teaching and performing research at uh, Harvard Medical School at the age of 37. And I woke up and I had a major hemorrhage in the left half of my own brain. And through the eyes of a neuroscientist, it was absolutely fascinating experience to watch the cells go <laughs> offline circuit by circuit. But over that four hours, uh, I had major deterioration to the point where I could not walk, talk, read, write, or recall any of my life. I became an infant in a woman's body. And um, uh, two and a half weeks later, the surgeons went in and removed a blood clot the size of a golf ball uh, that was putting pressure on my left hemisphere circuits. And then the doctors sent me home and said, we have absolutely no idea how much you're going to get back, if anything. Mm -hmm. And um, good luck. And and it took eight years for me to use my understanding in my right hemisphere about how the brain organizes information to rebuild the circuits in my left hemisphere so that I could regain those skill sets. And what I realized was I wasn't just regaining skill sets. I was re, uh, revitalizing personalities that I had had, which we all have. Um, and so that's what led to this book is um, uh, the four characters that drive our life as I experienced the hemorrhage and I lost uh, both in the left hemisphere, two of the left hemisphere characters of thinking and emotion. I shifted into having the right hemisphere emotion and thinking uh, and then used that tissue to rebuild the other two characters so that we could be whole brain. So um, yeah, that's how, how it all came to be. And, and thus whole brain living is what I truly believe to be the evolution of humanity by bringing all parts of our brain into yeah. consciousness so that we can influence ourselves by knowing what we really are biologically. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And so before that major shift, 
before the the sickness, the what do you call it, the the stroke, hemorrhage, right? the, the hemorrhage. stroke. Yeah. Yes. You were a Taurus. <laughs> I was a Taurus. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you were a Taurus. Mm -hmm. You were born a Taurus, and then this happens uh, at a Sagittarius new moon. Yes. And of course, there's a lot of nuances to it. We're not going to get into that. But I just, when you were talking, I just remembered when I saw the, the TED talk, that you look like a Sagittarius because it's oh. like you have your your arms up and you're like you're feeling it and you're distributing it. You're giving it out to people. Yes. Anyway, what you you were saying there is also the you were talking about the the feeling and the thinking part of each of these hemispheres and that is something i mean for you it's it's old news but for many of us we're still like trying to remember okay left is for logic you know the left hemisphere yes. and then the right is more maybe the intuitive but there's more to it and that is what really blew my mind um to the point of frustration honestly because because i've i mean i'm like yeah I know a little bit about many different different kind of personality systems. And then I know a whole lot about astrology. That's also mm -hmm. about personality. But this is just, it's a layer that I, I didn't know about. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to I wanna ask you about the four characters, but I also want to ask you, do, do you, can you understand, can you follow me how it can also be a little bit disturbing? That oh, it's just absolutely. all in, in the brain? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, to the mere concept that the reason I exist as an individual is because there's a tiny little group of cells the size of a peanut that tells me I am Joe Bolte Taylor and this is my identity and my likes and my dislikes. Of course, you know, that's that that's a level of reduction most of us are really not very comfortable with. And and then place on top of that that, you know, when I'm mad, when I'm angry, my anger is real. And it's like, mm, well, um, your anger is the product of a group of cells that run your anchor circuit. And if you get rid of those cells, then then anger or sadness or whatever joy or happiness doesn't exist anymore. And and it is disconcerting uh, to think that as a biological creature, if I think of myself as a human, uh, then, then I'm a human living a life and my name is Jill and I like the color red. And to think that a stroke could wipe all that out for me, but I could still be a live functioning human being is very, very disconcerting. So, so absolutely. Mm -hmm. Or I can recognize that, oh my gosh, I am this massive, this magnificent collection of these cells and a group of the cells uh, is so amazing that it defines me with an identity. And it, I, there are cells that, that separate me from the energy around me because mm, if I lose those cells, no, I actually know I am a life being, an energetic being, ball of energy around this collection of cells. And I'm connected to all that is, and which means I'm connected to the collective whole as are you, which means we really are just one human family. So yeah, I, I understand. Uh, um, but instead of an either or, uh, I think it's uh, either and. And Absolutely. I am this and I am that, not I am this or I am that. It makes a lot of sense, yeah. So, but when you start to talk like that, you know, saying that we are whole and there's not a separation and we are energy beings, I'm thinking about my spiritual practices and Qigong that I'm really into, but you're talking about this from a scientist's perspective. And that um, is what is so curious and so validating. Well, every, every ability we have, your ability to experience any, anything. So the feelings that you feel when you do your different practices, whether it's a meditation or it's a prayer or whether it's a, a, a Buddhist practice with a Qigong, an energetic working pattern inside of the body, every ability you have, every experience you have has an underlying group of cells that resonates and performs that ability inside of you. So you can speak, I can speak because I have cells that do language. 
I can pray and connect to something that is feels greater than I am because I have cells wired for me to be able to feel connected to something greater than I am. Uh-huh. So it's like paralysis. If, if I don't have the cells that allow me to move my muscles, I simply cannot move my muscles. But that's just a group of cells of one of the many, many, many factors and abilities that we have as living beings. So, so every ability I have in this magnificent design of myself as a biological creature, every ability uh, I have the ability to have is because of those beautiful cells. And when I better understand the map of the beautiful cells and what they do and the skill sets they hold and the skill sets I can become conscious of and therefore put more energy into that practice and let that grow or spend less time doing that because it's a habit I'd like to diminish, we have the power to choose moment by moment who and how we want to be. We are quite remarkable. In fact, I think my way of viewing us is more reassuring than yours because yours doesn't have that roadmap and it has kind of the need to be, and I don't have the need to be, I simply am. Wow. I'm just pausing. Wow. Okay. Taking that in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I and think- it, it's interesting. Mm-hmm. I've never had this particular conversation with anybody before. So mm-hmm. yeah, I, I, it's very meaningful. That that is surely pleasing. One of my characters. You can let me know, let me know which one. But I I have an inner <laughs> character that wants to be really special and irreplaceable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you love character too. We all have that's, one. That's a character too. Great. We all need that. Yeah. Okay, but thank you for following me and meeting me in that actually, because that, that was a question. Yeah. So I'm just going to take a, a little one more question before going into yeah. the planned questions, because then I've also been into IFS or I am into IFS. Do you know this uh, internal family systems? Yes. By Richard IFS, Schwartz? yes. Yes. Yes, so, I love F- IFS. Go ahead. You do, yeah, because yeah, that's yeah. that's yet another way of explaining the different parts to us. Yes. So how do you how do you make the connections there? I'd love to know. Well, what I love about IFS is that it's the only uh, psychological um, thinking patterning, as far as I'm concerned, uh, way of looking at the brain that actually acknowledges the different parts of who we are. Um, I, it does not fall directly on top of whole brain living. Um, and IFS has a focus more on the, uh, the characters one, the left hemisphere thinking and the left hemisphere emotion, the pain from our past. And we can name the pain from our past, a, a lot of different kinds of characters. And then the character profiles of the care of the, the left thinking tissue, Um, at the same time, so so whole brain living, I do not do therapy. I am not a psychologist or a psychiatrist. I'm a neuroanatomist. So I look at the actual brain and the skill sets of those brain, uh, of those, those skill sets and the cells underlying everything, uh, and how those package into the four modules of cells of our two emotional cell groups of cells and our two thinking groups of cells. Um, I have, I have spoken with a lot of people about IFS, mm-hmm. um, I have people who study IFS are very comfortable with whole brain living yeah. and actually find it to expand beyond the therapeutic use. However, the biggest difference is mine's not about therapy. Mine's about how do you live a healthy life with having a healthy relationship with the four different parts of your brain? Right. And so when it, but you, it goes together, even though it doesn't go it on does. top of, but it goes, it, it, uh, it's a great it, connection. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And when you understand, when you actually understand whole brain living, it gives you a bigger picture understanding when you're going and doing the therapeutic work with IFS. But IFS right. fits inside right. of whole brain living. Whole brain living doesn't really fit inside of IFS because IFS is focused on the problem. I see. Whole brain living is focused on the big picture solution. Right. There's it's they're very they're very different and yet, you know, it's still just a brain, but yes, those characters and those different pieces that they the family systems as it breaks down 
fit inside of sure. the whole brain living characters. That's yeah. what that was my question. Okay, that's that's yeah. really good. I feel that you're really yeah. answering some questions that I have. And and you're I'm sure you're really yeah. oversimplifying when you're talking about a group of cells, but it's it makes sense to someone like me. So thank you yeah. for that. No, it's pretty much a group of cells. Okay. okay <laughs> good. It's pretty okay. much a group of cells. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> because different cells, like I can wiggle my finger because I have a tiny little group of cells that does mm. that. I mean, it's yeah. not very many, but okay. they, they have to be there or uh, or, sure. or I can't do that. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and so, and the more I'm consciously aware of the differentiation of the different parts of my brain gives me higher levels of differentiation in my behavior patterns. So, it, so emotion, for example, emotional patterns, a lot of people think they don't have any control over their, their mm. rage or their anger or their fear. And it's like, no, those are a group of cells. And, and if you look at, at it as a group of cells while you're experiencing it and honoring that I have that group of cells and I'm running that circuit, pretty much from the beginning of the trigger to you run the circuit and then it flushes through you and out of you at a biological level is less than 90 seconds. So we are biological creatures, wow. which makes us in our own way cellularly predictable. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go into the character. I just want to read a very great sentence here on the back of your book. Uh, the award-winning author of My Stroke of Insight, which is the book before this one, reveals who's inside you, inside of you, and gives you the tools to choose who and how to be in every moment. And that's exactly what you're talking about here. So right. you agreed to go through the characters, right? Yeah. With us? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so first of all, the basic difference between the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere, if we're really going to simplify it, is um, the right hemisphere is right here, right now, right here, right now. Are right, right here, right now. That's good the way left, to remember it. Yeah. Yeah. Right here, right now. Mm. The left hemisphere is not about right here, right now. It's about the past and it's about the future. Yeah. So the left has linearity. L L left linearity. And in that linear linearity is a logic. Mm -hmm. So the left hemisphere is logical and rational and uh, analytical, and it has a linearity across time. And the left hemisphere is the tool then we use, language, another L word, language to communicate us, me, fit me, because it also has a group of cells that has identity, me, that structure that says I am, Joe Bolte Taylor, that Jill Bolte Taylor has to be related to the social norm. What's going on outside of me? What does my society reward me with? Mm. What does my society not want me to do? So how do we define right, wrong, good, bad? Okay, so that's that's that left hemisphere. The right hemisphere doesn't have any of that. Doesn't have me, the individual. So I feel in the right here, right now, big as the universe energy ball connected to all that is. And part of all that is, is you, you're a big energy ball somewhere else. And it doesn't matter because we're all just a bunch of energy. So we're just one big energy ball in relationship to the energy ball of the planet, in relationship to the energy ball of the universe and all of the ebbings and flowings of all the atoms and molecules. So we experience ourselves to be open and expansive and literally as big as the universe. And in that sense of the universe is a sense of love and peace and what mm. will be, will be. And oh mm. my God, I'm grateful I'm alive. Mm. Okay. So those are the basic differences between the left and the right hemispheres. Yes. But the left hemisphere has thinking tissue on top of emotional tissue. So thinking tissue, I call that the, the left thinking character one. Yes. And character one results in a bunch of skill sets. It thinks logically. It has language. It defines what's right, wrong, good, bad. It defines the boundaries of where I begin and where I end. So the, it, it is our A-type personality that tends to go to work. And it may, decides what's right, wrong, good, bad, and it fits me into the social norm, and it combs my hair if that's appropriate. It puts my glasses on and my earrings in and gets me here on time. It controls yeah. and organizes, it's, right? It's pretty important, right, to, to get it's you there on time. Yeah. It, it is the, the, the efficient part of who we are. It makes lists in order to get things done. It remembers, it keeps track of, you know, when do I need to do my laundry? It keeps track of when do I need to go to the grocery store and what's on that list? 
I mean, we have to have we have to have a functioning. Now, we know people who don't have a really strong character one. Yeah. And you walk into their house and things are where things are. They're yeah. not in the drawers and the drawers aren't orderly, right? Uh, you look in the car and it's like, um, okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's kind of, of chaos. That's and the mean. right hemisphere, yeah, the right hemisphere likes chaos. The yeah. left hemisphere likes order. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. And, so that's that's character one. And but I should call we, mine Helen. Yes, I exactly. I was just going to say yeah. that that we, we, we you actually encourage us to give yeah. the names to these characters yeah. so that we recognize I know them. Helen. I know Helen very well. <laughs> I know what she feels like inside of my body. I know how she sounds. I know how she holds my body. I know where she works and where she hangs out. My even my friends can call and and if Helen answers the phone, they say, "Oh, hello, Helen." <laughs> Uh, do you think someone could call us this evening when you have some more time? And it's like, I'll put it on the list because that's what Helen does, <laughs> that's what right? Helen does. So, so Helen is Helen. Hell on wheels, she gets it done. That's what I call mine. And I encourage everybody to name this part of who they are. Did you name yours? I, I, I tend to call it the compensating factor. <laughs> If you know what I mean, it's like I have yeah. to I have to employ that part because it's so not there naturally. Exactly. And so exactly. sometimes sometimes it's like compensation where it gets too much, not with the cleaning part, but more with it being there on time where maybe I'm there an hour before. Oh, I love that. You know, <laughs> but that's what it does. Yeah. I mean, that's its job. And and some of us, that's all we have. That's all. Excuse me. That's all we exhibit where or that's our primary default. Uh, and in some of us, it's a trained skill set. And in some of us, it's a resented part of who we are. We resent that we have to fit ourselves and as a social norm at all, because I want to yeah. go do my art or my music yes. or, or my physical activity or exactly. go out in nature and be with the universe. I mean, it's like I'm busy over here. I don't have to organize my, you know, clean the dishes in my sink. Yeah. I mean, you know, so so really we as humans, we become a, a delicate balance between these four different parts of who we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's character one. Yes. Character two is going to be that emotion of the left hemisphere. So this is all the pain from our past because this is emotion across that linearity of time. So all my pain from my past is in this character. However, in the, the reason, so, so this tissue, you have to think about this from a biological perspective. Cells right here, right now. Okay, I'm a living being. Microbes are probably in the consciousness of the present moment. They exist in the now. Um, and and ha half of me, my right hemisphere, exists in the consciousness of the now. But these cells in this little character too, left thinking, left emotional tissue, they were willing to step out of the flow of the present moment where there's bliss and euphoria. They were willing to step out of that with information about the present mm. moment in order to compare the present to the past and project possibility into the future so that we could recognize anything that looked like a danger or a threat or something that we could move toward or away from. So the price we pay for our emotions and our pain from the past is the safety in the present moment and our ability to learn from our present moment experience. Right. Okay. Let me just, so is it left? No, where are we? What is it called? Left emotion. Left emotion. Left emotion. Left emotional character two. Character two. Right. Yeah. So, so this is the price we pay mm. for being safe. So if I have, let's say, uh, when I was young, um, uh, something that really negative happened with uh, a person who had a certain look about him. And then many years later, I see a person who reminds me at a subconscious level uh. of that person. And I automatically reject that person based on my past experience was negative. And right. so, so my, it, it's a, a way in which I protect myself based on my past experience with, without that even coming into my, the consciousness of my character, one thinking rational brain, right? Mm -hmm. All I know is that doesn't feel safe. That feels like a threat I'm going to push away. So, um, right, right. uh, this is, this is a tool 
our brain uses in order to protect us. At the same time, it's going to give us um, a, a reactivity, an emotional reactivity and triggerableness based on our experiences. Uh, and that can feel very negative, negative emotions, but, but it's, but that's the flag energy waving saying, hey, there's something in the present moment that is has hit this trigger of I don't feel safe. And I need to look at that and evaluate that and move through that and heal that yeah. so that I can move on and not feel constricted. Yeah, does does sound like therapy a little bit. <laughs> that's therapy. And that's it's inside of there where we're going to have all those little IFS Yes. Uh, um, parts of who we are. Yeah, because you so you mentioned that it's fear based, constricted, rigid, but then also loves oh loves conditionally. I just thought unconditionally. Okay, loves conditionally, yes. manipulates, self is critical, superior, inferior. Because that's all right, about wrong, me. Good, bad. I mean, yeah. that left hemisphere again. It has me, 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 mm. me, me, me. Mm. And I learn yeah. early. What age one, two? I I'm a me, and mm. I'm gonna say no. And I'm saying no, because I can say no, and mm. I don't like it. And it better look like this if I'm going to love it. Mm. And if I'm going to like you or love you, you need to do A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then I will love you under those conditions. And then we carry all that stuff into our adultness because biologically we're still the same group of neurons. Mm. We mm. just go across time and we we grow up, but our emotional circuitry never does. Mm -hmm. No, that's that's really good to separate it like that. That it's this mm -hmm. is about me. This is the identity, the conscious. But then there's also a part of it that's unconscious identity, right? Because a character two here is unconscious, right? Well, character three, yeah, because we also have emotion in the right hemisphere. Yes. Okay. But yeah. emo So so character three then is going to be the emotional group of cells in the right hemisphere. Okay. And the right can, hemisphere can we doesn't say that have a me. Can can we say that all the emotional characters are unconscious? Technically. Technically. So technically, if you ask a scientist, if you ask a scientist about what part of the brain is conscious, they're going to say the rational analytical part of our brain. Well, that's mm -hmm. character one. Mm -hmm. Well, what about characters two and three, which are both emotional, and character four, which is the thinking tissue in the present moment? So science reduces itself to that just that logical analytical part of its brain so much so that the scientific method is a method which means it's linear across time it is a method of character one these are the tools mm -hmm. of character one so if you ask uh psychologists even you know if they're based especially on the jungian uh model character one is part of the consciousness and characters two and three which are our emotions are part of our unconscious or subconscious as is character four which they don't even talk about at all because it's kind of out in the woo woo and they don't even want to talk about it right mm -hmm. because there's no way to apply your your scientific method to that which is not of method <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah. I see. you yeah. know it cannot be measured by their methods no. so yeah. so then they deny it or it doesn't exist or they don't like it because people who are like that are woo woo and they dress funny and i don't like the language they use and it violates my little character too doesn't feel safe and so i push yeah. it away and that's that's why it makes a lot of sense to name them uh, name them and see them as yeah. persons like this is helen and she, she doesn't have yeah. that in her system it's just, it's not applicable okay. it's not applicable right helen is great at helen yeah abby is great at abby that's what i call my little character too abby right. and little character three and four they have their own skill sets that are unique to those brain cells and i did interrupt you there so I th i'm sure the listeners are not going to forgive me if we don't go back and say okay so what was character three so characters three is the right emotion and character four is the right thinking and so again the right hemisphere overall it doesn't have a me the individual those brain cells are over there in the left hemisphere right wrong good bad judgment it's over there in the left hemisphere so in the absence of the left hemisphere the right hemisphere is just right here right now yeah. and right here right now is what is literally right here right now what's behind me isn't even right here right now because i don't see it so it's not the input coming into me, except for the big picture of energy. And I become this big energy ball without the boundaries 
of where I begin and where I end, which is defined by the cells in the left hemisphere. So I end up present moment experiential. What does it feel like to be in the present moment? What does it feel like? What is the, the temperature of the air around you? What does it feel like to have your, your clothing on your body? What does it feel like to have your earrings mm. in or the glasses on your nose? What does it feel like when you dive into the water? What's the pressure against the body or the temperature of the water? Or what does it feel like to know what wet, wet is versus not wet? I can, you know, I can answer you. I can yeah. answer you. Uh, expensive, open, <laughs> risk-taking. Exactly. I'm, I'm listing I'm listing from the book now. Exactly. <laughs> Fearless, friendly, loves unconditionally, trusts, support, grateful, goes with the flow, creative, kind, sharing, collective. Yeah. Who doesn't want that? It's yeah. fun. It's playful. It's, it's adventurous. It's mm. interesting. It's curious. Mm. Uh, it's creative. Um, it's innovative because it's putting things together just as they are. It's uh, entrepreneurial. It's coming up with new ideas based on, you know, not the structure of the left brain, but new possibilities. Mm -hmm. So character three is this very uh, engaging experience of being alive in the present moment without all the judgment, positive or negative of the left brain. Mm. And then the character four is also part of that. Character four is the right thinking mm -hmm. tissue. So it's what is the thinking tissue of the present moment without the emotional content of the experience. And it, it feels like love. It feels we, we tap into it when we feel gratitude, when we feel awe. I mean, what do you feel when you look at a rainbow? I've never looked at a rainbow and not just felt wonder. It's like wonder. It just brings out this mm. beautiful wonder of, oh my God, I'm alive and look how sparkly the universe is. Um, and, and so there's, and, and we tap into that by way of, of just a sense of gratitude. I am literally a life force power of the universe made up of 50 trillion amazing cells all packaged together as one living organism. Mm. Now, if you can say, look at yourself in a mirror and say that to yourself and not feel all then you're not paying attention mm. to what you are as a biological creature and you probably are running some of that negative emotion of that little character too that has self-loathing and self you know whatever but it's not just release that it's just circuitry mm. release that and pull yourself into the consciousness of your character four so, so the power of knowing these four characters is in an instant i can feel what little character two feels in an instant i can shift out of character two into character one because i can differentiate these four different characters in myself. I know what they look like in the mirror. They hold my face differently. They speak differently if they have language at all. They hold my body differently. They engage in different things. They have different values. Mm. They're, they're, they're all different. And when I have the power to choose which of these four characters I wanna be in in any moment, that's true personal freedom. I truly believe whole brain living is the evolution of humanity. It's what we're supposed to become because then we feel peace. And then the more time we spend in our peace circuitry, the more peace we project into the world and the more peaceful the planet will be. And that's my ultimate goal as a human being is I truly believe my number one job is to love people. Yeah, That's it. That's my job. Now, can I provide you a whole bunch of information about the brain and my experience and the wonder of it all? Sure, I can talk for hours. But my number one job is simply to love other people. And if I come in with that vow as the core of my value, I live a very different life than not. Yeah, no, that's really, that's really great. Because that's a question I had about how this fits into your whole philosophy. But, but I hear you. And it's, yeah, it's so, your book is describing, a, a great, doing a great job of describing how these characters work, by the way, because I guess that's, isn't that most, most of the book is like getting to know those inside of you, right? And I just, I'm just here at page uh, 40 and 41. And yeah, there's a couple of pages here where you, you let the characters give this book a title. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love that. I really love really. that. It's good I mean, humor. Really. It's, uh, that's a good humor. Well, and idea. and they're, well, they're all going to have a very different perspective, yeah. aren't they? Because they're very different characters. And, and I, you know, it's, I, I just loved that. It's really great. So <laughs> I just want to mention, so character one is saying this, this book is called Know Your Brain, Own Your Power. Yeah, and that's what that's what our rational thinking yeah. part of character one would want. Helen, own your power. And yeah, and because when you say it like that, you can start to recognize it. Like there are certain podcasters that also have that profile, like become great or something like that. Master yeah. your life, right? Right. And this is how to achieve success. And then there's emotional character two here that would call yeah. it feelings matter and your feelings are valid. Exactly, because that's what little that the little character feels like. Feelings matter. Feelings that. matter. Who doesn't want a book called Feelings Matter? Character one, because <laughs> character one wants to go straight to power, right? Own your power. But feelings matter. And this book, the beauty, one of the beauties is that it gives such a strong voice of love and compassion and validation and value of our pain and when we recognize that this is a part of us that deserves to be loved just like and can be loved by our characters one mm -hmm. three and four mm -hmm. then we become a self-nurturing self-sufficient human being and i don't have i can feel self-loathing but little character four is going to come in and say honey you're not alone yeah. we got you we're here yeah. with you. You're not alone and you are worthy of love and we love you. Mm. And, and, you know, when, when you can genuinely know that to be true, because you know, that part of yourself, everything changes. Yeah. Everything changes because it is in that isolation of the individual pain from the past that I become not worthy of being loved because that's the message that part of my brain has created. But mm -hmm. the other part of my brain knows, I, I value that, I recognize, and that's significant, but we love you. There is an, an mm -hmm. eternal love in these other parts of who we are that have the capacity to self-love. Mm -hmm. And so you can take care of yourself through this yeah. knowledge. Yeah. Oh man, there's so many, I'm getting so many references and, and things that land for me in this moment, like this, there's the I'm getting confused about the characters here, but okay, yeah, three, three and four, yeah, they belong to the right here right, right now, yes, uh -huh. yeah. So they are all about disidentification. We talk about that in the therapy school that I study at mm -hmm. uh, disidentification because that's actually a way to solve a lot of our issues, right? To right. step into that field, yeah. Wow. Okay. But so and you, and you are wired to have that capacity. Yeah. But how are we wired? Because why are some people more character two and some are more character four and one? If you consider, well, first of all, we're wired, right? Mm -hmm. So how are we wired? We're wired by our genetics in okay. the womb that okay. begins. And then we are influenced and wired by the influences of our external world. We're wired by the amount of sleep we have, the amount of sugar and caffeine we consume. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we are, we're a biological creature. Everything influences us. Nature is one part, nurture is the other. So we are what we are. However, when I can differentiate clearly between the different parts of who I am. And I can say I spend more time in my character too than I, I'm a worrier. Let's say I'm a worrier and I worry and I worry and I worry and I'm wired to worry and I'm worrying because that's how I set up information. A plus B equals uh, a C I can worry about. And, and so if that, the more often we run a brain circuit, the stronger that circuit becomes and then it begins to run on automatic. So the more I worry, the more I tend to worry. Mm -hmm. The more time I spend in awe, the stronger my ability to experience gratitude so and you, feel awe. You can train the characters actually to appear Absolutely. more frequently. Okay. Absolutely. 
Yeah, that's the that's the beauty, part of the beauty of being human. And that's the power of being able to d- differentiate all four of these characters. And we we realize then that they all serve a really healthy purpose. So how do we bring them into conversation with one another so that they are constantly negotiating with rather than against mm. one another and who I am and how I spend my time? Mm. Okay, I'm so tempted to ask you more questions, but... We need to look at the astrology. And, okay, um, please. And I also, Looking forward to it. Yes, and I also need to remember to take a, a screenshot. So I'll just <laughs> I'll just do that real quick, okay? Because I okay. want I want a photo of you. Okay, I'll see if I know. Good. Yes. Good. Thank you. Okay. We made it happen. Good. Okay. So <clears throat> ah, this is so interesting. Um. So I've been looking quite a bit at your birth chart and then the rebirth chart and. Just to make Looking that, forward to it. Yeah, just yeah. to make that clear, that is when in in '96, where you had the stroke, you you felt that, right? It it was I didn't even think about it, but you you said it was that. a reset. It was it a, was a complete rebirth reset. Yeah, so it makes sense to make a new birth chart for sure. Yeah. Okay, so I, so I'm of course a disclaimer that it's not going to be as nuanced as it is sure. inside of me, but it's just in in, in, yeah. in big lines here. So what is similar? is actually what is called the nodes. So what we can call the the point of karma and the point of destiny is actually similar. And that's that's because, so it was your nodal return. And Interesting. Yeah, it was, so that, you know, it happens every 18 years, you know, so it was kind of, wow, it was right at that time, meaning when you had this rebirth, the soul still wanted the same, some of the same core lessons, even though it changed personality. So yeah. what is similar is the choice to take the risk, take as- action and believe that you have something of value. That's that's kind of, um, it's like a background to- uh, tone in your chart. This kind of what's next energy, the need to create, and in- the need to create a better world and take part in your own destiny. And so this was also a strong energy in you before, because uh, I know you were fighting a fight there. You have Mars square the nodes in in Cancer, so you're fighting a fight for your family, and 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 that strong energy is then balanced through your life by the ability to emphasize with others, look at things from other people's point of view, and enter into alliances so that you are not alone in whatever fight that you were fighting for and whatever change you wanted. Interesting. So, so that is that is kind of thought provoking, provoking that it doesn't change between the two charts. But now I'll, I'll go to very interesting, right? Yeah, because I I changed and yet I didn't. Yeah, you know, I yeah, I mean, the core of my right hemisphere remained the same. So mm-hmm. my relationship to the bigger picture of everything remained the same. What changed was. What do I do with that? And how is it then going to be expressed in the world? Exactly. And am I going to be motivated to do so? Yeah. And what we call the notes is really the journey of the soul. I mean, in a way, the whole chart signals that, but it's even more about the soul's journey. So, so that's it. Yeah. It, it is just like, wow. Okay. The soul wanted that same journey it was still on that same journey now just really changing positions inside so what what a really obvious shift is that you went from Taurus to Sagittarius and that is in fact a shift from the left to the right hemisphere archetypically because uh, yeah because uh, Taurus is the left and Sagittarius is the right hemisphere Taurus is the need to be in the physical world and to care for right proportions and really invested in solidity because it has to do with our survival and in order to survive you need to develop something to trade so Taurus has this insight that there are finite resources you see so that's that's different to the left hemisphere right so right um no it's different to the the right hemisphere, the right. I guess, would we'll say right. it, it, it's infinite, right? And right. and Taurus is saying that there's this, it's finite, and eventually we know that everything will erode. But Taurus is just gonna hold on to find something sustainable as long as possible, something to store, because for 
from a Taurus perspective, changes the enemy. And yeah. so it's all about material security, sustainability, and and not really a whole lot of need for more. But if I just gonna add a little complexity, then your Venus was in Gemini in your birth chart, and that is, it's not a need for more. Um, in the sense of anything spiritual like that, but it's a need for intellectual stimuli. And that makes sense because you've, you've studied a lot, right? You're a researcher. So, yeah, but, but that's, that's interesting. Um, so it's just like a rough idea how this kind of left brain part of your old chart uh, is, yeah. is functioning. And we can say that the Taurus risk being a slave to the senses, if it's in its low, I'm kind of focusing on, you know, the more negative side of it because of course it has a lot of beauty to it as well but say just, that again so th so that the risk was being slave to what to the senses ah, you know, to the physical senses yeah and only like measuring things according to the physical world yeah. and then people can become instead of complex human beings they can become objects and assets to us yeah okay are you ready for the rebirth chart here yeah okay so there. that's Sagittarius and it's even your sun and, and your moon so it wasn't that new moon so it's both sun and moon uh, so it's very powerful Sagittarian energy and it relates to bridging cultures developing civilization knowing that there is more to life that the great beyond and there's just constantly more to grow into is the Sagittarian wisdom because Sagittarius sees the potential, the optimistic side, the promise, and believes that we can break the walls, open the gates, and expand into um, something new and share that with others. So, and, and what is also interesting is that Sagittarius learns through personal experience rather than the yeah, more objective research. It's, it's, it's through the personal experience. And so in that sense, the stroke of insight is very Sagittarian because it was personal to you, but but yet there was a truth in it for everyone. And that is the Sagittarius right. uh, quality that it wasn't just true for you. It's there's a truth in it for everyone and people may not believe it. And then the Sagittarius is just that's fine with me because I'll run the risk of yeah. I'll, I'll cross this boundary no matter what people say. And right. often, often Sagittarius will prove people wrong uh, by running that risk. Okay, I'll let you say something. <laughs> I, I, I'm right. I'm taking notes. You'll send me your notes. Yes, please. I can do that. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I, I think that's absolutely right. Um, first of all, I love that uh, the nodal, because nobody ever, had ever explained to me that the nodes remain the same. Um, because I did remain the same. I just had a reset of left brain opportunity. Yeah. And so I feel like I was reset to my birth where I didn't have the left developed and then the left got developed and then it got zapped. And then, but I still fell back to the same me. I didn't change. And then it was like, okay, well, what do I do now? And it's like, well, you know, I'm alive. I might as well rebuild because boy, do I have a new insight that could truly make a difference in the bigger picture of humanity and how we look at ourselves. If I could just figure out how to communicate it. And then it, it has taken, you know, the Ted talk and my stroke of insight, which you'll read. Um, but really whole brain living is that gift. And, uh, it took me that long to figure out how do I communicate this in a language that other people can really value and then have a reverence for themselves. Um, so, so that's fantastic. I, I, I feel like that's, that's very, very accurate. Oh, nice. I, yeah. So I do have many, I can I say yeah. one more of my notes yeah. because there's one more central thing. It's actually, when you mentioned the word rebuilt, and of course that is a big part of your story that you had to rebuild, but it's just that in both charts, what is squaring to the notes and that's, I know it becomes technical here, but what is squaring to the notes is something very central. It's like a key that you have to do this life in order for the balance between the two notes, uh, the, the two polarities to, to be balanced. Um, so what, what that energy is for you is Capricorn. And you can live it out in various ways when what, of course, when it is square to the notes, but it can, 
um, in rough terms, it can either be about following the mainstream, following other people, and and qualifying something inside the established system. Uh, it can, <laughs> yeah, that's one. I think maybe that was the first part of your life. And then the second chapter is about uh, the, another way to do it is to introduce a new system into society and restructure the existing. So you see, it's both about the existing system. One is just following what is, and another is bringing a new vision into it. And that would be the higher potential of that Capricorn square to the nodes. That's absolutely fascinating because I, when I did have the stroke, um, I, I never really took myself very seriously even though I had a serious left brain life. Uh, so when I lost the serious left brain life after the stroke, I was okay. I was fine. Cause I knew that that was just, you know, my left brain life. And I was okay with losing, stop being a Harvard scientist, you know? So, so the ego of that little character too went offline. And because of that, I, I did, I was good with losing whatever I'd built. But when I came back into the system, I did not change. I didn't go off into la la language. I did not talk, start talking about God or spirituality or, or all those things that the right hemisphere language usually encompasses. Mm -hmm. I stayed steady and true to the language of the brain and my neural anatomical training. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I could change that system yes. slowly, casually, uh, over time, bring in new information, a new dimension of its understanding of the brain that kept me tried and true to be in a neuroanatomist. And that was a really big conscious decision on my part because that was where the power was. If I opted not to do that, uh, I would have been dismissed as a stroke victim, wow. a stroke survivor, but mm. you know, Jill's off on another planet now. Yeah, yeah, and it yeah. was like, no, I, I held, I held to the roots of my Taurus world, yes. if you will, they were strong enough that I could hold to those roots, yeah. lose that, but I still had it in my right hemisphere because the right hemisphere knew all the science in the bigger picture of the, and ingrained in my sculpture of, of the body, the experiential of my learning. I still had all that. Mm -hmm. I just had to go back and relearn the terminology. And I never thought I'd go back to teaching and performing research, uh, but I went back to teaching neuroanatomy and gross anatomy. Uh, and relearning all of that. But now I was very different in my value and what I knew. So, yeah. so this is really beautifully, beautifully put. Yeah, that is so interesting. I, I bet that was a, a decision to make because uh, when you have followed the other Capricorn path of, you know, trying to get up in the hierarchy, climbing the ladder, I've heard you talk about it like that, climbing the ladder, right? then you can also get disillusioned. And when you have these realizations, you can get like, okay, I'm not doing any of that anymore. But actually the right. higher potential when you have Capricorn and you do, <laughs> then that is doing mm -hmm. what you just said, like join the power, but do it in a conscious way that actually right. changes things. Yeah. So right. just yeah. without, and, and yet I do it um, with abandon, you know, I don't care if the structure over here hates my experience and what I've gained and what I brought back, you know, but they don't. And that's been the beauty is so many people say, well, Jill, what do you do when, you know, these, you know, what do neurologists think of your experience? And mm -hmm. it's like, well, they hire me to come and talk to <laughs> neurologists, right? They hire me to come and speak to medical oh. school professionals. They hire me yes. uh, to give them, to share with them the experience and what I gained and they value that or they, the, you know, I, I receive, I don't receive a lot of criticism. I think I've had one person be critical to my face. Now, you know, the internet is another thing and anybody who doesn't like you can say anything ugly. 
Um, and when the TED talk happened, someone said, oh, it was a fake brain and she's made up the story. And it's like, people are gonna, you know, haters are gonna hate if you're a Taylor Swift fan. Um, and, and I am, I'm a Tay Tay fan. So, um, uh, you know, I, I, I just, I That's don't. That's the, the fearlessness of Sagittarius in you. Yeah. Just saying, this is how it is. And I'm gonna yeah. run the risk. I'm gonna push yeah. the boundary. Yeah. And if you want to learn something based on an amazing experience, if you're open-minded enough to that, to be respectful and learn, then we will grow together. And if you're not, then you're not my population. Exactly. I can't help you. Yeah. If you're closed-minded and closed down and shut down and your own little character too mm -hmm. is just raging about it, it's like, I'm sorry, I can give you a good book to read yeah. called Whole Brain Living, yes. but you're not my population of who I'm going to speak to. But like just yesterday, I did a podcast interview with three um, uh, uh, emergency room physicians oh. who are on burnout. And we had this wonderful conversation about whole brain living and how to, how to, how to help oneself. And so, so it's not like, you know, there's, there's a mass rejection of it. And yet at the same time, it's a conscious decision to say, you know, I, it is my number one job to love you. Whether you mm -hmm. love me back is not my issue. Mm -hmm. Whether you love yourself is not my issue, but helping you understand that feeling of not loving yourself so that you have to spew your negative venom out into the world and onto me. But again, people aren't doing that. Mm -hmm. So that's not been my experience. Mm -hmm. And now I'm running programming through a university um, a school of education at DePaul, and I'm, I'm still adjunct professor at the IU School of Medicine. Oh so, so it's so not cool. like, yeah, it's not like, like, it's not like it's been a problem. It's just been a lovely, you know, I'd love this, the, speaking to you about this because you've given me a different framework within which to look at this. And I love that. The oh, stars were, great. you know, the stars were set. This yeah. was, I was the right girl in the right time, the right education and the right personal experience for that major stroke to happen. Yeah. And then for me to recover, I just feel very blessed to That's get to live the amazing. life I get to live. It's amazing. So thank you. Thank you so much. Just last question. Was it a fake brain on your TED no. talk? Okay. <laughs> Just because you mentioned no. it, I got curious. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah, was no, it actually, a real brain? actually, it was a, it was the brain of one of my very best friends um, who had died uh, oh recently gosh. before I, okay. I gave that talk. And, um, you know, she and I had sat around her dining room table for years saying, how do we help heal the planet from Bloomington, Indiana? And then then she died. She donated her brain to me so oh. I could have it oh. for education. God. And then I'm invited to give that TED talk. And that was the first TED talk to ever go viral. So Ted and I got famous simultaneously oh my with yes. my friend. I I think that's I think that's magic to that that it was her energy. Yeah. But that's just me. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Jill Bolter Taylor. I'm so pleased that you agreed to to meet with me and my listeners. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. This was this was great for me, and um, uh, I hope I hope your audience also finds it a value. I think so. I'll send you my notes, but there there's a lot of Please. spelling mistakes. I don't care about okay. that at all. <laughs> I really don't. No, really. I I I I will I will reflect upon it. Yeah. I really appreciate Good. you taking the time to do that. Good. Don't let Helen see them. <laughs> Helen will analyze him. She'll say, oh, yes, yes, yes. She'll create order for me. Great. She'll be, give me a flow chart. Oh, great. All right. Thank you, Thank so, you so much. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye.